chapter number one this morning as we continue on with our name tag series and we talked last week how important names are and uh, you know certain names that uh, maybe we don't really like you may have a name and your parents called you that you don't really have a choice and if you had to pick a name it might not be that name but at least you weren't named Jezebel or Judas or Hitler. Uh, if that was my name, I think I might think about changing that once I was able to do that. And uh, it's funny how somebody can just take a whole name and just kind of destroy it. Um, you know, I as we had each of our children, we began to have the discussion back and forth of what are what are we going to call each of our children. And uh, we had a couple of names lined up. But once you start to get to three and four, all your first choices have already been taken. And the ones you had picked out for what you were going to call a boy, you just kind of throw those off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, some people, I, I wonder what they're thinking when they name their child. You know, you hear the name, we're going to have a, a baby, and uh, we're going to name them such and such. My wife and I uh, knew a couple of boys in uh, Alabama. Their names were Lelangelo and Orangelo. Lemon and Orange Jello. That's what their parents named them. And I'm wondering what in the world type of drugs were you on? <laughs> what do you want to name these boys? I don't know. I just had Orange and Lemon Jello, so let's go with that. Fancy it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, there are certain things that, man, when I hear somebody's name, I'm glad, I'm glad I was not named that. And uh, here today, we're going to look at uh, a couple of children that, man, they don't, they don't have the best names in the world. And uh, we're going to take a little trip to Hosea's house and try to learn some things here. Uh, but let's go to the Lord in prayer as we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we can look into your word. I'm thankful for the truth that we find that if we confess our sins, Lord, we repent of the wrong that we have done and we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and you will forgive us our sins and give us eternal life. I pray for those that may not be one of your children this morning, they've not yet put their faith and trust in you. I pray that today might be that day. God, I pray for Christians everywhere. Minister and give us exactly what we need today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here we are in Hosea chapter number 1. We get reading in verse number 2. It says, The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So God tells his man, Hosea, I want you to go and I want you to get married, but I want you to marry a prostitute. And it tells us, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of the blind, which conceived and bare him a son. And I've circled that word him there. We won't go into great detail this morning. We've started an online series, verse by verse, through Hosea. You can go on and check that out for yourself. But she bare him a son. And the Lord said to him, call his name Jezreel. Now, God's going to give him the names for his children because he has a specific message to deliver to the children of Israel. He's going to use Hosea's family and his house as a visual illustration to get his point across. So you name him Jezreel, uh, which means scattered. He says, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. So I'm going to scatter the children of Israel. And uh, we can, we, let's skip down verse number six. She conceived again and bare a daughter. Now every word of God is given to us and is very important. Notice it doesn't say bear him a daughter. But she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name lo For I will... No more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. So she bears a daughter uh, from uh, 
her life of prostitution, she goes back into it, is unfaithful to her husband, gets pregnant, and God says, I want you to name this little girl Lo Ruhema, which means pity is taken away. The idea of, of the love and compassion that a parent has for a child says this child doesn't have that. I'm going to take my compassion, I'm going to take my mercy away from you. He says, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. But skip down verse number 8. Now when she had weaned Lo Ruhema, she conceived and bare a son. So notice that again. This is not Hosea's child. This is, once again, a product of her lifestyle. Then said God, call his name Lo Amma, which means not mine. Can you imagine having that name? Hosea is introducing his family, and his third son comes along, and hey, I want you to meet my son, but he's not mine. That's his name. I mean, you talk about having a name that you don't want to have. Everybody knows this child's not Hosea's. He's, he's not my kid. He's not mine. He says in verse number 9, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. And so here's a couple of names to you, man. This is not something that I want to be called. I mean, no compassion and not mine. This is not my child, so I'm not going to have compassion on it. And this one's definitely not mine. And God says, I want to use these children to deliver a message. And it reminds me of John chapter number 8. Turn over there with me. John chapter number 8. Lord Jesus Christ is doing some teaching and preaching. And as he often did, he got into some discussion here with the Pharisees and with the religious leaders of the day. We get to verse number 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And so this idea that they were Abraham's uh, seed, and uh, they're having this discussion about fatherhood. He says in verse number 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. And the whole point he's trying to make is that Abraham's not their father. You've got a different father. And uh, they say in verse number 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man which hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Of course, here they're uh, putting a little scorn of criticism to the Lord Jesus Christ because it was well known that Jesus was not Joseph's child. And uh, so they were pointing at his upbringing. And Psalm 69 has a lot to say about that as well. But Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not? Which of you convinceth me of sin? If I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Come on. And so here, one of the things Jesus is talking, remember, he's talking to the religious leaders. He's talking about the people who made it their life's work to do good works and follow the letter of the law and all these different things. But as he often said, your heart is, is far from me. But just going through the motions doesn't mean a thing. 
Just dressing up nice and coming to church doesn't mean anything. No. Putting money in the offering plate or being a member of any other church or being baptized, that's, that is worthless. It's nothing as far as earning you favor in a relationship with God. Yeah. Come on. And he says, you can talk about being Abraham's children all you want to, but the proof is in the pudding. And when I look at your life and I see what's going on, you are of your father, the devil. We've got a choice. We're in one or two families here this morning. We're either a child of the devil or we're a child of God. And it's that plain and simple. And if you're here today and you've never put your faith and trust in what Jesus Christ has done in offering his blood and his life as a sacrifice for your sin, no matter what any other church or religion or whatever else says, you are not a child of God. We're not all God's children. I hate to break it to you. Yeah, come on. Jesus himself said that. We're not all God's children. You can call yourself a child of Abraham or a child of God or whatever else you want to call it. But he says, when I look at your life, you're a child of the devil. Yeah. He says, I spoke the truth and you don't, you don't like the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. But he says... That's the child you are. He might look at him and, and he's looking out across these religious leaders. And he says, you're low room Hamah. You're, you're not mine. You're not my child. You're not a child of God. He might look at him and say, you know what? You're low Amma. You, you ain't my child. I'm not going to have mercy. I'm not going to have compassion on you as I have for my own children because you're not mine. And, you know, I stop and think about those of us who are parents and, and some grandparents in there. You have a certain heart and a certain relationship for your own children. I, I love my girls and uh, love spending time with them and, and they hug on daddy, they kiss daddy. If I lay down or sit down, they're climbing all over me like a jungle gym because they're my kids, and, and I don't mind that. But when somebody else's kid comes up to me and, and tries to, you know, hug me or, you know, whatever else, I, you know, I get a little uncomfortable. I want to, all right, that's, that's fine. Just shake, shake my hand. <laughs> You're not mine, so don't climb on me. Come on. And... I might tolerate somebody else's kids for a while, you know. They'll have a sleepover or whatever else, and they come to girl, come to play with the girls. You're, you're here to play with the girls. You're not here to talk pastor's ear off, all right? <laughs> come on! You're not my kid, so I don't have to treat you like one of my kids. <laughs> and, uh, but Jesus looked at these religious leaders. He said, you're not mine. You aren't one of my children. There's only one way to become his child. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said, I am the only way. It's not that you do good works and you do good things and you're, you are a child of God and sometimes you just happen to do bad things. No, he said, you're a child of the devil and the reason you're living the way that you're living is because you are a child of the devil. You're acting just like your father. I mean, how many times has my wife said that to my own children? They'll say poop or some other thing, and uh, you're just like your father. <laughs> Pray for my wife. She has a hard time trying to teach these girls some manners because I don't make it too easy on her. And uh, the old saying, didn't your mother ever teach you any manners? Yes, she did, but the child also had a father who taught them otherwise. But we act, we act like our parents. What Jesus said. You're acting exactly like your father. I can tell whose child you are. Wow. He says you're a child of the devil. And really fleshed out what John chapter number 1 uh, had already stated. It says in John 1 verse number 11. He came unto his own and his own received him not. And they rejected Jesus. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. They were too concerned with their own religion and their own good works to recognize that the Messiah had already come. 
He says, that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But I'm so thankful for verse number 12, because it means I can come and know Jesus Christ as my Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. He says there's one way to become a child of God. One way to be born again is by putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn over a couple of pages to John chapter number 3. In John chapter number 3, this Pharisee comes to Jesus. His name was Nicodemus. He's a ruler of the Jews, verse number 1 tells us. And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And so he, he comes to Jesus and he says, I, I know you're a teacher from God. He recognized the things that Jesus was doing, the miracles and all those things that were going on. He, he disagreed with his, his fellow Pharisaical brothers. They said, hey, that's got to be a work of the devil. And he said, listen, nobody can do those things unless they're from God, so you must be a teacher from God. And Jesus has this discussion with him. He answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says, you've got to be born again. When we're born the first time, we're born in sin, we're born as a child of the devil, he says you have to be born again yeah. into a new family. You're a new creation. <laughs> old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And there's, it's a, a rebirth, a spiritual birth. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Nicodemus had a hard time wrapping his mind around him. He failed to understand that Jesus is talking about a spiritual birth, not a physical birth. And it seems to be, you know, what he's saying is it's impossible. You can't do that. And he's absolutely right. Physically, it's impossible to be born again. I cannot be born again by doing some physical good work. I cannot be born again by going through some baptismal waters. Doesn't do it. That's a physical thing. You can't do it by putting money in the offering plate. Any physical thing that I have to do has nothing to do with being born again because you cannot be born again physically. We're born physically one time. Jesus answered, verse number 5, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And so Jesus went on to say, listen, I'm not talking about a physical birth. You were born of the flesh, it's fleshly, you're a child of the devil. You've got to be born of the spirit. You've got to be born again. And he goes on to explain to them how that happens. How can I be born again may be the question that you're wanting to know here this morning. Jesus goes on to explain it very clearly. He says in verse number 14, let's start there. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, as a Pharisee, Nicodemus would understand the illustration that's being painted here. There was a time when the children of Israel wandered around in the desert and they began to complain. And so the Lord sent poisonous snakes into the camp to bite them and to kill them and to afflict them with pain. And, and so as this was taking place, they cried out for salvation. Do something to help us and to save us. You know, we, we won't forgive us for what we've done. And so God tells Moses, I want you to make a brass serpent, put it up on a pole, and you lift it up, and whoever looks at it, if they're bitten, they won't die. They'll save their life by looking at that brass serpent. Now, all throughout the Old Testament, we have no idea what in the world was that for. Why would that happen? 
It's not until we get here to John chapter number 3, Jesus explains to us that that was a picture of what Jesus Christ would do for us. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Only by putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ can we have forgiveness of sins and can we be born again. He says, verse 15, And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so you have to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be born again, to have everlasting life, he says. Now, I want you to look at verse number 18. Says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. So you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you're not condemned. Yeah. But notice the other side of the coin. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He says, you have to believe. If you have not believed, if you do not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are condemned already, because you have not believed. You're not a child of God just because you go to a church. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't matter if it's Good News Baptist Church or any other church in the entire world. That's not going to do you one good bit as far as being born again and becoming a child of God. He says you have to believe. You have to put your faith and trust. As many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God. That's the only way of salvation. That's the only way to be born again. And become one of his children. And so they try to look at it and say, you know, just because we're a certain heritage or race or religion or whatever else, we're a child of God. He says, no, that's not how it works. If you haven't believed, if you've not put your faith and trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you're not a child of God, you're a child of the devil. And he says that you're not mine as we've looked at it. Your name is as good as Loama, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. But as we continue in Hosea, and we get into chapter number 2, we find something interesting. Verse number 1 says this, Say ye unto your brother, he's talking to Jezreel here, the oldest son, the child, I, I know that you're my child, she, she, Conceived and bear can a son, the scripture tells us. Talking to Jezreel, say ye unto your brethren, Amma, and to your sisters, Ruhema. Now you'll notice the low has been taken off of both of these names. The not has been taken away. Their name has been changed from not pity and not compassion and not mercy to compassion, the compassion a parent has for a child. Name has been changed from not mine to mine. This is my son. This is my child. This is my daughter. Just as there's been those that have been adopted and brought into yeah. someone's family. Amen. I'm going to take and I'm going to change your name. You're going to become my child and I'm going to become your parent. Yeah. God says we can be born again into his family and as we look at the end of chapter number one, even though he says at this point you're not mine and you, there's no mercy and no compassion, I've circled in verse number 10 the word yet. Because often when God is pronouncing a judgment, he leaves just a little door of hope. And we see that in chapter number two, where we can find restoration, we can find forgiveness, we can find a right relationship with him. It says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass, notice this, that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Now here he's speaking about a restoration between the children of Israel and himself, and that day is coming yet in the future. God is going to have to bring them through some difficulties and some hard times to get them to see Jesus Christ as their Messiah, to repent of their sin, 
and turn to him. But there's going to be that restoration. But we see this quoted in 1 Peter chapter number 2. And so we can apply it to Christians as well. Christians have not replaced the children of Israel. Two different groups. God has different promises and different things for each of those groups. But notice in verse number 9 of 1 Peter chapter number 2, Peter's writing to Christians. And he says this in verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Notice this, verse 10. Which in time past were not a people. You were not mine, but are now the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy. Lo, Ruhamah, no compassion, no mercy. He says, but now you are a mine. Now have obtained mercy. What a wonderful thought. Yeah. Here I am, a child of them. Lost and condemned. God says, you know what? I love you. That's right. And I'm going to send my son to pay the price for your son. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. God judged him in our place. If you'll put your faith and trust in what Jesus has done, his death, his burial, his resurrection, he said you'll be born again. No longer a child of the devil. No longer condemned with that wicked being. You are now a child of mine. Where once you were not my people, now you are mine. Where once you didn't have mercy, I'm freely pouring out my mercy upon you just as any parent has compassion and grace and mercy towards their own child. He says, I'm going to give you my grace and my mercy. But it's not through physical things. It's not through physical works. Paul said, I try to do the physical things. I try to work my way into being a child of God. And I've come to the point where it doesn't work that way. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And if you want to try to earn your way to heaven, if you want to answer for your own good works, you can. But the only thing you're going to come up with, and God is going to say to you about your works, is you're condemned. You're guilty, and you will pay the price for your own sin. We've got to... Put off all those things, yep. all the works, all the good things, and my faith and my trust is in one thing alone, and that is Jesus Christ and what he's done for me. He says that's how you become born again. That's how you become a child of God, and you go from not having mercy yep. to having mercy. You go from being not my child, being a child of the devil, to now you're my child, you're a child of God. I want to encourage everyone who may be here this morning, you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I hate to tell you the truth, and you may not want to hear this, but you're not a child of God. You're a child of the devil, the Bible tells us. You need to put your faith and trust in what Jesus Christ has done and be saved today. To be born again, a child of his, I want to encourage you to do that. Christians, you ought to give thanks. You ought to be rejoicing every day that I'm a child of God. You know, one of the greatest things, my, my wife and I, we try to have family devotions with our kids uh, every night. It doesn't happen every night. But we try to read some Bible and just take turns praying. And, you know, one of the, one of the sweetest things to hear my, my girls pray. God, thank you for my daddy. Amen. Thank you for my mom who loves me and does stuff with me. Yeah. What a wonderful thought. Yeah. And we ought to give thanks to God for making us his child. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a father that I want his. But he saw me and he loved me anyway. He brought me into his family. Yeah. I didn't have mercy. I didn't have grace and compassion. but And he made me his child. Yeah. Now I have it. We ought to give thanks. Yeah. And we ought to spread that news. That's right. You can be a child of God. You can have his mercy and his grace by putting your faith and trust in what Jesus has done. What a wonderful thought. My name used to be Loruhema. My name used to be Loama. But not anymore. 
Yep. Now my name is Bruhema, and I'm I. I'm his. I have his compassion. Yep. 